Wasn't Patricia McCloskey right in protecting their homes? Were they wrong in the way they did it in coming out with guns? What happens when ideological or political prosecutions take place? Legal civil war? Let's find out. On June 28th, peaceful protesters tried to uh, get into the mayor's home in St. Louis, Missouri. The mayor lived in a place called Portland Place, a private community, with gates and inside homes and streets, everything private. Now, when the protesters realized that they could not get in, they said, who cares about the law? So they broke in the gate and they poured into the private community. When the McCloskeys heard people, hundreds of people, getting into the community, screaming, making weird demands, they looked outside and they saw hundreds of people. They got scared. Of course, I would too. So they grabbed a handgun and the AR-15 and they went outside of their homes and stood on their perimeter yelling at the protesters to leave, to move on, that they're breaking the law. Disperse. Y'all see, on my live feed live, he got his rifle. Uh, Y'all can see. Now it's important to know here that the protesters broke the law by A, not having a permit for the protest, which by the way, you need. You need a permit for a legal protest. And second, they broke the gate in. At that point, they're criminals. That's, there's no peaceful protest. They broke the law in order to get into your property. At which point are you allowed to defend yourself? Even though the McCloskeys, in my opinion, were clearly defending themselves and their, pro and their property, and it's quite reasonable to assume that they were in fear for their lives, given the recent violence, violent riots, and murders that happened around these peaceful protests. Regardless, Kim Gardner, St. Louis's circuit attorney, she charged the McCloskeys with unlawful use of a weapon, a Class E felony. To me, this is odd because in Missouri, there's a, a doctrine called uh, the Castle Doctrine. And in fact, it could be argued that it's the strongest Castle Doctrine in all the United States. Missouri recognizes the Castle Dro Doctrine and allows residents to use force against intruders without the duty to retreat based on the notion that your home is your castle. This legal doctrine assumes that if an, in if an invader disrupts the sanctity of your home, they intend to do your home harm and therefore you should be able to repel their advances. Missouri's law is more extensive than the law in other states because it permits property owners to use the amount of force reasonably perceived as necessary, including deadly force. Missouri! Additionally, Missouri law, specifically section 563.031, use of force in defense of persons and of property, a person shall not use deadly force upon another person under the circumstances specified in subsection 1 of this section unless, that means, a, per a person can use deadly force if he or she reasonably believes that such deadly force is necessary to protect himself or herself or unborn child or, or, or another against death, serious physical injury, or any forcible felony. This applies to the McCloskeys. Two, such force is used against a person who unlawfully enters, remains after unlawfully entering, or attempts to unlawfully enter a dwelling, residence, or vehicle lawfully occupied by such person. They broke into their property. All of these could apply to the McCloskeys. Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt has gone on record saying he wants the case dismissed and that he thinks that Kim Gardner is involved in political prosecutions. Governor Mike Parsons said that if the McCloskeys are convicted, he would pardon them. Now, Patricia McCloskey was the one waving her gun at the protesters and people were saying she had no trigger rep discipline, but it turns out that her handgun was inoperable. And this is crucial to the case because in Missouri law, for what they're being charged with, the gun needs to be ready and capable of lethal use. See, the McCloskeys were lawyers. And as lawyers, they had a case, a trial. And in that case, they needed a gun prop. And they used that gun. In order to use the gun as a prop, they had to make it inoperable. So not only was the gun inoperable, but they knew that it was inoperable. When the police, at Kim Gardner's behest, took the McCloskeys' weapons to the lab, they realized that the gun was inoperable. But for the McCloskeys to be successfully charged, the prosecutors had to prove that the weapon was re readily capable of lethal use. So, what did Kim do? She did the impossible. She tampered with evidence. The police lab was instructed to dis disassemble the gun and reassemble it in a way that it would be capable of lethal use. 
And so it was done. This type of political or ideological persecution is incredibly dangerous for the country. Is it not a legal civil war when you have a circuit attorney charging someone, charging the McCloskeys and not, not charging any of the rioters, letting them out of jail, bail free? Is it not a legal civil war when you have a circuit attorney charging someone and then you have the attorney general saying that the case should be dismissed and the governor saying that they were part of them anyway? Isn't that obvious political and ideological prosecution where Kimmy Gardner doesn't prosecute any rioters, lets all those people out of jail, yet the McCloskeys must be prosecuted? What about when Kim tampers with evidence? Should that be okay, or should she be prosecuted? Comment down below, what do you think? This division we're experiencing, or legal civil war as I like to call it, is also being fostered by the media. Check out the difference in coverage of the McCloskeys between the Fox News Network and the Communist News Network. Describe for us, if you would, why you believed you and your wife were threatened by these 300 people in your yard. Well, Tucker, you've got to, you've got to understand, my house sits right on the edge of a road called Kings Highway, and our private place is Portland Place, where my wife and I were preparing to have dinner maybe 70 feet from the gate. By the time we looked up, we saw the, the uh, marchers coming down Kings Highway and getting loud. We looked over at the gate, and there's no police there. Our private security wasn't there. Nobody's there. And I look over at my wife, and I see all these people outside the gate. And then the gate bursts open. People start coming in. And then a flood of people start coming in. They're angry. They're screaming. They've got spittle coming out of their mouth. They're coming towards the house. And you know, on June the 2nd of this year, the, the uh, protests in downtown St. Louis went violent. He is an attorney, and the couple also has outside counsel who joins us now, Albert Watkins. Thank you both for joining me. Indeed. Indeed. Um, counselor uh, and Mr. McCloskey slash counselor, uh, we can talk about uh, the legal rights and the facts. Um, I want to talk about not having a right, but whether or not something is right first, which is how do you feel about becoming the face of political resistance to the Black Lives Matter movement? First of all, that's a completely uh, ridiculous statement. I'm not the face of anything opposing the Black Lives Matter movement. I was a person scared for my life, who was protecting my wife, my home, my hearth, my livelihood. I was a victim of a mob that came through the gate. I didn't care what color they were. I didn't care what their motivation was. Look. Neither of these networks are good, but Cuomo here is way out of line. What, are you supposed to wait till you're, you're, you have a gun to your face till you defend yourself? Are you supposed to wait till the protesters are up your steps and into your door before you defend yourself and you come out with a gun? Of course not. Come on, Chris. Anyway, hopefully the McCloskeys will be fine. Comment your opinion down below. Like, subscribe. Ginger out.